Okay, in this video we're going to have a go at using Scratch 2 to produce a maze game. So as in the previous video, I'm going to start by removing the sprite. I'm going to go and produce a new sprite. Um, for the purpose I'm going to maximise this. And I'm going to use the paint tool to draw myself a simple crocodile. So here we go. This is going to be the character we use in our game. Give him some legs. Okay, I can use the circle tool to give him an eyeball. I can use the fill tool to fill in the space around his eye so it's all white and I can use the fill tool and the gradient colour to fill in his body so we get over to a nice effect and we can see we can move him around. Now if I convert him to vector I can shrink him down to his more reasonable size. And having got the sprite I also want to make the background so I'm going to click on the background now on the background here I want to be able to produce um, a maze. I'm going to produce a very simple one here, but basically what I need is I need a set of lines that the crocodile or whatever sprite we've made can't pass through. So I'm going to use a black line, or uh, we'll go with a black line. And I'm going to use the rectangle tool for this because it gives a nice thick line. And I'm going to just put a basic set of lines in so we can give him some outside lines so we can't go through these. And then I'm going to put some passageways he has to go along. He's got to go along here. He's got to go down here. And maybe he's got a choice here. Go one way or the other. One of these should go to the right place. So remember, this is basically a little bit more than a loop. Um, So we could start here, he could come around, and then he's got a choice, either this way might be the right way, or this way it might be the right way. And, and that, that will do for simplicity for the moment. But at the moment you can see my crocodile is too big for the lines I've made, so I'm going to need to click back on the sprite. He's still in the uh, ve vector mode, so I can click on resizing him. And I want to make sure he can freely move up and down these lines without hitting the sides. When I did this with year five, they made some incredibly complicated mates. Um, and it's worth spending the time trying to build it up. Now, if we've got a crocodile here, the moment he's facing the wrong way. So what we want to do is we want to produce a second costume. So whilst we're in the sprite mode in the costumes, I'm going to duplicate the crocodile. And I'm going to flip him over so we can have him facing this way. Or we can have him facing this way. And now I can start to program him. So I'm going to go into the scripts. And I'm going to start with some basic events. So when we press the green flag, the first thing is I want him always to start here. So we're going to go to motion and we're going to use the go to x, y. And it will pick up the x and y coordinates where he is at the moment. So if I move him, you should see those change. Let's put him back there. And let's use those to start with. So whenever I start the game, he will go to there. We want to now set some controls. So I'm going to use the events again. And this time I'm going to program it so if we press the up arrow or if I press the down arrow or if I press the right arrow or if I press the left arrow we should get some movement on our crocodile. And I tend to lay them out like this so I can see uh, logically which way they're going to go. If I want to press the up arrow I want to change his motion and I want to move in on the y coordinate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set change y by 10. And what we should see now is if I press on the green flag and I press on the up arrow, he goes up. If I press down, nothing happens. So on the down, we want to change y by minus 10. So we're going to put a minus number in there in front. If I change the 10 to a 5 or a smaller number, it will do the same thing but in smaller increments. So y is up and down, so therefore x is across. So if we change x by 10 here, 
press the green flag and press the right arrow, you can see that my crocodile is now starting to move right. And therefore, to move him left, we want to change x by minus 10. So now we can go up and down and right and left. The problem is at the moment, when he goes left, he goes backwards. So what we now want to do is look at the costume. So we're going to go to look, and we're going to switch costume to costume 2 when he's going left. Costume 1 when he's going left. And when we're going right, we want to switch costume to costume 2. So when we go press the right button, he is facing right. When we press the left button, he's facing left. When he's pressing up and down at the moment, he's facing whichever way he was before because I don't think it matters. But you could put in two additional costumes. So we could go back to the sprite, we could go back to the costumes, we could duplicate him and rotate him so he's facing up or down if, if you wanted to do that. I'm not going to do that at the moment. Now I've got some movement. At the moment, he can pass right the way through this black line, so we need to fix that next. So what we're going to do again is on the events, we use another green flag, so this is happening all the time. When the green flag is pressed, it's going to start. And what we want to do is we want to put a sensing in. So if he's touching a particular colour, then he gets sent back to the start. So I'm going to press the green, which puts him in the start position to begin with. And I want this to happen quite a lot, so I'm going to basically say repeat forever. So when the control button's clicked, repeat forever. If we're using the if statement now, and this is good because we're now trying to use some loops and if statements. If and we're going to the sensing, he is touching a particular colour. So put that in. And if we click on the colour there, we can now just click on the black. And you'll see it picks that colour up. Then what do we want to do? Well, we want him to go back to the start. So we're going to go back to the motion, and we're going to set the X coordinate there. What should now happen is when we press the green and move him across, he's fine on the white, but as soon as he goes in, up into the black, he jumps back to the start. Now, Scratch isn't enormously sensitive, so if you've made these lines quite thin, you may find you get right through the line before it actually notices what you're doing. And this will basically work as, again, for me, we need an end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new sprite in, and we could draw it, or we could import one from the library. And for this one, I'm going to import one from the library, and I'm going to use something like an apple, something very simple. Press OK, and put the apple at the end here, so the apple becomes our goal. Now if I go, you'll see now I'm in the script section for the apple, and I don't want a script for the apple, so I'm going to go back into the crocodile. And again, we're going to put another one of these um, forever loops in, so I'm going to say again, event, when we click the green flag, we're again going to repeat forever, and this time, still the same idea, if the crocodile, because that's the one we've selected, the spro selected, sorry, sensing, is touching. Now this time we don't need to use the colour. We can use, because this is an actual object with a name, we can say, if he is touching the apple, now we need to decide what happens. When I did this with year five, what a lot of them chose to do is they chose to go back to the backgrounds and produce some additional um, backgrounds within here. So within the background section here, we could produce additional backgrounds. And what you could then have is um, at this point on the script, if he touches the apple, we change backdrop to backdrop two. At the moment, I don't have a backdrop, so all I'm going to do is get the crocodile to say something. So I'm going to say, Great work, you got me to uh, finish. And then if we press on the green button, we should now be able to attempt to navigate our crocodile around. And you may find at this point you've got some debugging to it, like will my crocodile actually fit up that gap? No, he won't. So we'll make him a tiny bit smaller. again. So he goes along, he goes up, he goes right, okay, slight 
glitch we need to quickly solve there. Okay, let's try this again, so press the green button. Okay, let's move that crocodile off the bit where he's stuck there. So we press right, he goes along. Can we get him up? Yes. Can we turn him right? Make the sprite smaller. We add extra sections in, we can obviously make this game harder. And we could add an extra sprite in the second controls in, and therefore it could become a race between two players. There we go. And a very simple maze game is now complete. Thank you.